Did you know that Notion released more than 15 updates in the last few weeks? Keeping track of all these changes can be really tough, which is why I regularly put together Notion update reports like this one. So let's get right to it with the first new release. Notion buttons can now open links. This is actually a big deal, not just because you can add better navigation to your sites and link out to other elements, but also because it helps you trigger certain automations. But first, let's take a look at how it works. So here we have our button, we are in the settings, now under add action, we can say open page or URL. And now uh, for the first time, well, we can simply type in uh, any type of website. So maybe my personal one, click on it, click on done. And now if we click on this button, we'll get directed to that website. Amazing. The second use case is that you can trigger external automations. For example, let's say you have a contact database and you want to send emails to people when it's ready to send. And you don't want to wait for some scheduled automation, but you want to do it when you click a button. You can do that fairly straightforward uh, through Make, right? Or any other tool that allows you to set webhooks. So you can create, you know, webhook, say custom webhook. Uh, and here, you know, we can now add a new one. We can tell, say, okay, this is my contacts uh, webhook, save. And now we get this URL. Now what we can do is we can use this URL and input it here in our button instead of the other thing. So now, oops, that was the wrong thing. <laughs> now, if we add this uh, and link to it and click on done, the second we will click on this button, it will trigger this webhook and we will see now, okay, it has received something. And we can use this then to trigger the whole automation and send information or like, you know, uh, run any type of external automations. Now, to be very clear, this is still not a proper webhook from Notion because we can't control a lot of things, right? We can't send information with it. We can't, uh, you know, uh, determine on which button uh, the page was, uh, the, on which page the button was clicked. But it is a starting point, which can be quite useful if you, you know, want to have these small automations triggered immediately. And images in Notion can also have links. Same as with buttons, this is really nice to add more interactive elements or navigation to your Notion systems. And that can be either for your own internal systems, but also this applies to any public Notion pages, right? So if you use Notion as a website builder, this is amazing. Doing so, super simple, click on the three dots under uh, add a link or command K once you have an image highlighted, and you can just paste in any link. And now you see if I hover over it, I get this, uh, you know, like uh, <laughs> effect that tells me, okay, there's something to click and it tells me also where it links to. And then when I click, of course, I go to that website. But of course, you're not just limited to external URLs. You can also link to internal pages in your Notion workspace, which makes this really, really useful, right? So if, for example, if you uh, add these as small images to several columns and can then say, okay, like, please jump to this page or jump to that page. Notion automations get not one, but three improvements. First, your triggers are now a lot more specific. Previously, only uh, single, multi-select and uh, status properties allowed you to trigger upon specific changes, whereas all other properties would trigger for any change. But now we can have a lot more flexibility. So for example, if you have a relation property and you want to say, okay, if a specific you know, entry in my other database is assigned, please do an action. That wasn't uh, possible previously, but now we can go to add trigger and say, okay, if responsible changes to, uh, sorry, not responsible, if a client changes to uh, Dunder Mifflin, uh, in that case, please, as the action, set the tag to one. Uh, and again, like now if we set that specific client, right, it will automatically uh, assign that tag. That's the first change for the database automations. The second is that we can now um, specify uh, for uh, actions like tags that we have and operators, right? So that we just add something to it rather than just replacing it. Previously, we could only replace it completely. So now what we could say is, okay, let's create another automation. And here, if the status uh, changes to, uh, you know, if the status changes to done, then please, uh, as a tag, uh, take, you know, not just replace, but add to it or remove or toggle, add number five to it, which again, just gives you more flexibility because we can now uh, just, you know, add on things. That's also particularly great for responsible tags, right? If you don't want to remove uh, another person and just want to add another one in. And last but not least, uh, we can now have several uh, triggers that have to uh, be fulfilled together. Previously, in terms of um, our triggers, we had only uh, or options, right? So if either of our triggers uh, would be fulfilled, we would start automation. And now, as you can see here, we can set all of our okay, or any. So we have a choice between saying, okay, all these triggers need to be true together or only one. All in all, great little update to make these a bit more powerful. Number four, reworked callouts. This is probably my favorite update of the whole video because it's just so useful. Uh, if you create a callout, we can now finally remove uh, the emoji. Whereas previously you had to do this trick where you had to get the same background color or transparent PNG. So what you can do now instead is if you click on that icon, you can just say, please remove it. And now we get this much cleaner look. 
Pro tip, if you now go in here and say set the color to the default background, you basically get this nice little padded container. And this is great to lay out your pages, in particular if you use columns or just wanna you know, contain information. Plus, it's now a lot easier to format things inside. Because again, previously what you had to do was first, if you wanted several lines, right, you always had to do this, uh, you know, drag the line inside uh, trick. Now you can simply press enter and it will keep giving you lights. Now, important thing, that only happens once, so you can't keep pressing enter, right? So if you press enter twice, uh, it moves it out. So if you want several empty lines at once, best to just uh, still move them inside. What's also really nice about this update is it gives us now control over this first row, right? Again, previously, this had to be like a text. So we had, again, uh, no option to, to format it, which often meant that we had to just, you know, do something empty to create this nice look and then drag other blocks below it. But now you can just uh, take any block uh, in here. So you can have like, you know, a heading as a top level element. You can have databases. Uh, and that, again, means it's such a useful block, particular if you then, you know, like use it to structure a page, for example, right in this like two column layout and now have like just like little boxes around it and can create a lot nicer layouts. Number five, you can now comment on database properties. To do so, simply hover over your database and you see that now you get this like uh, comment button appear. So you can just say, okay, is this correct? And same as before, we start now having a thread, we have it highlighted and on this page it shows up as one of the comments. Now, before we continue, quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Gamma. Gamma makes it incredibly easy to create your next slide deck, website, or pretty much any visual asset that you need. That way you never have to stare at a blank presentation ever again. For example, when you wanna get started, you can either generate a presentation from a one-line prompt, you can import it from like a specific page, right? So if you've already written a blog post about it, you can use it as a reference, or if you outlined what you wanna talk about already, you can give it the whole uh, content. So for example, uh, just a few days ago, I had to prepare a presentation from one of our local Berlin community meetups. And I thought, what about if I talk about the one workspace to rule it all and make it all Lord of the Ring themed? Well, I brainstormed the content and I created an outline and I'm just going to paste it in here. And now I can ask um, Gamma what I wanted to create. In this case, of course, it's a presentation. So I'll click on continue and now it will read the prompt, figure out what it needs to do and will suggest to me, okay, this is like what, uh, what it would create. But now before we go into the actual presentation, I can adapt it, right? So I can tell it, okay, please actually generate something from that, right? I don't want you to condense it or to, uh, you know, just keep the same. Uh, I can change how much text I want on individual slides. And I write to be brief, right? My presentations are always like very minimal text on the slides. We can specify who we want this to be for and what tone we want. And of course, we can also pick how it should, uh, you know, grab the images. So for example, we can say, please give me AI images. And I can even go in and pick the specific module, right? If I say, okay, for example, maybe I really, really like the way DALI 3 generates, uh, generates visuals or stable diffusion, depending again on my preferences. And then in terms of the content, uh, I can see whether I want it to be like a uh, freeform or like more this card by card style. So let's stay with freeform for now. Uh, let's tell it to generate maybe uh, 10 cards, right? A bit of a longer presentation and I can click on continue. Now, while it starts working in the background, I can pick a first style and to have these pre style themed, or I can also go for a custom one that I saved. And the good thing is I can always change it later. So for now, I think like Lord of the Rings, it might vibe well with this like greenish color. So let's use that for now. And then if we need something else later, we can do that. Then we wait a second while it generates it. And then it, we see it build the presentation in front of our eyes. Now, the really, really cool thing about this is that, as we all know, AI is always only a starting point. We never want to use these things directly, even if you give it a long prompt. But with Gamma, what you get is a fully editable presentation. So you could also build it from scratch in here, right? It is a fully fledged presentation builder, which means I can adapt any single element. So here's how it looks like once the images are also fully loaded. And again, everything's fully editable, right? We can also change the theme now if we say, actually, maybe we wanna rather have like a really, really dark and moody um, presentation here, right? So just one click, everything is different. Everything works uh, within it. And yeah, just amazing how quickly you can get started with the first draft of your presentation. So go check out Gamma and try it for free with the link in the description. Number six, subtask parents have become clickable. This is relevant wherever you use Notion's built-in subtask feature. So this option that you have these nested elements here. And as you know, if you go to your customized settings and then under sub items and you change the show as to, for example, flatten list, that means it will start showing you uh, always in little gray the uh, parent item next to the main item, which is particularly helpful, right? If you then an advanced filter and say, okay, I don't wanna see anything that has uh, a parent. So we only wanna see the child tasks. And now, previously other than before, we can now click these to actually open that parent item. 
Number seven, inside the formula editor, you now see icons for the corresponding property types. This is a nice quality of life improvement when you write formulas in the editor. So now if you uh, grab the email property you know, and say plus, for example, the status, uh, plus uh, responsible, you see that it will automatically pull in uh, these little icons that help represent the property type, right? So at a glance, you can very easily identify, okay, am I actually talking about, you know, like a person property, a text property, a number property. Very important, these don't change if you uh, reassign the icons, right? So they will always represent the uh, date format or like the, the, sorry, the property format, not the custom assigned icons. Number eight, there's now an easy way to see where all you're logged in into your Notion account. You can find this now under settings and then in the, under my account. And if you scroll here to the bottom, you see all the devices that you're currently logged in, the one that you're currently looking at. And you can also log out from here, which is great to make sure that you don't accidentally stay there, stay in, locked in on your friend's uh, laptop. Oh, and if you want to keep tabs on all the Notion updates in between my reports, then I've got you covered. On my website, I have now under matthiasfrank.de slash Notion updates, this whole running list of all the different changes that happen. So whenever, you know, you see something and you're not quite sure what to expect or someone talks about it on Twitter, then, you know, you can go to this place and you should get some more information. Number nine, no more untitled pages in Notion. Any UI change only, but always good to stay on top of these. So if you now click on new and then database, and create a new item, you'll see that this is now titled new page rather than untitled. And now we have a whole series of updates for Notion AI, six in total. The first one, an update number 10, is that you can now inside the prompt of Notion AI reference specific pages to add more context. This makes generative AI in Notion a lot more useful because what you can do now is if you have, for example, some uh, blocks here and say, I wanna write uh, you know, some uh, blog post about it, you can just go in here, say, ask AI, and then ask it to please uh, write uh, a blog post about this um i keeping in mind our and then just with add can mention other pages now so our uh, tone and voice blog posts and hit enter and we'll reference that page right in the instructions that we have on there and then write that blog post uh, accordingly really really cool number 11 you can also narrow down the amount of knowledge that notion ai has access to so to get it to search through specific sub pages this is great to fine tune the responses that the model will give you. So when you open Notion AI in any chat model, uh, you can see now that it shows you here what it will query if you ask a question. And here we can swap between all sources you can access to specific pages or specific database, right? So let's say I wanted to only you know, uh, query things in my knowledge database or maybe in my meetings database. And with my questions now, I will get a lot more precise responses. Number 12, Notion AI gets its own page, including search history. With that, Notion AI gets an interface that is very similar to ChatGPT or Claude, which again makes it a lot more useful for these general knowledge questions. You can access it through Notion AI, and here you see I can start a new chat, but I can also go back to my previous chats. And since Notion AI has also access to uh, ChatGPT uh, or Claude, right, if you ask the general question, it can pull from these sources, which means particularly for larger companies, uh, Notion AI can be now a full replacement to these tools. For in particular for roles that don't need access, you know, to uh, all the features of it and just need like general information like, okay, please pull something up, please have generative AI, which again helps you to consolidate your tools and reduce your cost of your tech stack. Number 13, there is now a global shortcut to launch Notion AI anywhere. To pull up Notion AI pretty much anywhere, simply press Command Shift J or Control Shift J. And no matter what app you're currently looking at, as long as you have the desktop app of Notion installed, you can ask that an AI assistant. Number 14 are one click skills for Notion AI. These quick actions are basically pre-written prompts so you don't have to prompt it yourself. So whenever I highlight any text right, and go to Ask AI, it will show me a selection of uh, quick actions that things make sense. And then we have a bunch more here in the body uh, at the bottom. One of my favorite processes for this is to create a flowchart. And again, you could have done all that before if you write the prompt yourself and ask for specific mermaid code, but just a little bit easier now. So we wanted to make a flowchart. We'll tell it, please make this uh, above the process that I have here. And then it will write that code and I will start seeing it here. Now, once it's ready, I can then easily add it to the page. So let's just uh, see what it comes up with. Here's our mermaid code, takes a second always. And we see, we get it including the different decision trees and everything. And we can then just either copy it or insert it here in the page uh, as an element, right? Uh, alternatively, just copy the code, uh, have it here. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you wanna uh, modify the code, you can switch here from preview to code, right? If you know how to write mermaid, or you can just ask AI again to modify it to get what you're looking for. And number 15 is the added support for PDFs or images inside Notion AI. To access this feature, wherever you have Notion AI, you can simply drag and drop something in, paste it in, or click on the attach file option, right? Let's say I wanna grab this picture 
and ask it to please uh, please uh, describe the image. Now, of course, if I attach a person picture of mine, that is, uh, you know, not maybe not the best use case. But so what you would do instead, right, is maybe you have uh, you work in marketing and you have certain creatives and you add them in and you ask it to write a description so you can give that to, you know, a copywriter to create similar assets or, you know, to analyze the structure of it to figure out why this works. Or, of course, the standard use case would be PDFs where you uh, attach it, ask it to summarize it, uh, extract ne next actions and so on. So much for this Notion update report. If you like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you never miss another one of these. Now, there's one thing though that is better than a Notion update, and that's hearing from Notion's co-founder himself about what the future will bring for Notion. If that's interesting to you, then just click here and I'll see you in a second.